I'm Ron Cave, Associate Professor of Entomology for the University of Florida. I'm here at the university's Beef Research Unit, and we're going to look at biological control as a critical component in the integrated pest management of an invasive pest of turf and pastures, mole crickets from South America. Today I'm with Dr. Howard Frank, retired professor of entomology for the University of Florida. Howard, when did mole crickets first arrive in the United States and where did they come from and how did they get here? Right at the end of the 19th century, we believe that they arrived in ballast of ships, solid ballast before the days of liquid ballast. Ships coming from Montevideo or Buenos Aires in southern South America, they would dump the ballast on shore when they arrived in port at such ports as Brunswick in Georgia, at Tampa, and at Key West, which was in those days an important port. Mole crickets emerged from this ballast dumped on shore and found things very much to their liking. Plenty of food, no natural enemies. So they started spreading. Why are mole crickets from South America a pest? What damage do they cause? They are particularly phytophagous. They eat plant roots. Unlike the native mole cricket, which is not really a pest at all in Florida, the native mole cricket is a distant cousin of the pest mole crickets that arrived here. When they first arrived, or they were first noticing as causing damage, what sort of control tactics were employed? Oh, back in those days, there were some particularly nasty chemicals such as um, calcium arsenate, uh, which were spread pretty widely. Later, after the Second World War, claudine became the major method of treating for mole crickets, and it too was spread very widely on golf courses, in pastures, in um, vegetable fields but it had to be applied again and again and again. Were, were they, they were effective, weren't they? They were effective if you kept up with, with spreading the chemicals. Okay. Well, I know for many years you did research on biological control of mole crickets. What are the natural enemies of mole crickets from South America? From South America, our team discovered three natural enemies, a beneficial wasp, beneficial fly and a beneficial nematode. And eventually we got them all here, researched, released in the wild and established. Well, tell me about the wasp. The wasp is a solitary wasp. Lots of people when they think about wasps think of paper wasps, think of the danger of going near a wasp nest, you might get stung. This doesn't happen with a solitary wasp, which has no nest to defend. It's innocuous. It, the adult females attack mole crickets on the open in plain daylight, or they go into the tunnels underground and drive out the mole crickets, and then sting them to paralyze them. They remain paralyzed just for a few minutes, just long enough for the female wasp to lay an egg on the underside of that mole cricket. And then, after a few days, a grub hatches from the egg and begins eating that mole cricket from the outside. The mole cricket is dead after 10, 11 days. The um, wasp grub pupates in the ground, spins a cocoon uh, from which the adult emerges after several weeks and the cycle is repeated several generations each year. Well, we're standing in front of this patch of flowering plants here. What's the significance of these uh, flowers here for the wasp? The significance of the flower is that it is, it is a wonderful nectar source for the wasp. Think of when you want to establish a butterfly garden to attract butterflies. What you do is you provide, provide them with nectar from certain plants that those butterflies prefer. The wasp does it similarly, but with different flowers. This plant 
which we like to call Lara flower, is very rich in sucrose and wasps swarm around it on sunny afternoons, especially late in the year. And it keeps them going. It provides the energy they need so they can fly around and chase down mole crickets. And why did you plant this here at the Beef Research Unit? Because there were problems at the Beef Research Unit. There were problems with mole cricket damage to pasture grasses, um, bahia grass in, in particular, and we wanted to find out whether a patch of these plants would really work to build up the wasp population and reduce mole cricket populations. And did it work? And it worked. Great, good. Well, what about the parasitic fly that you mentioned? The parasitic fly is, is also from South America, but unlike the wasp, it flies at night, only at night. And it's attracted to sound of male mole crickets singing. The fly will zoom in on a singing mole cricket and place two or three larvae directly on that mole cricket as he's singing or in close proximity to the mole cricket. And then the little larvae will flip. They do somersaults through the air and can get at the mole cricket and at female mole crickets that are listening to him. That's the important thing. They get the females too. The, wasp, the fly larva burrows into the mole cricket, develops inside it and kills the mole cricket. The fly larva then emerges from the dead body of the mole cricket, pupates in the ground, and after a further 11 days, you get a new generation of adult flies. And now are the wasp and the fly found throughout all of Florida? No, not quite. The wasp is now pretty much throughout Florida, all the way from Pensacola in the far northwest to Jacksonville in the northeast, as far as Naples in the southwest. So it's got a pretty good distribution. The fly, on the other hand, isn't spread very much beyond about Alachua County, but it's in all the southern counties. And the reason for that is simply that the fly is very sensitive to cold temperatures in the winter. And then you mentioned a nematode. And then we also brought in a nematode, and it came from Uruguay, and it has a totally different life cycle. Normally, it spends its time in the soil and lurks in wait for passing mole crickets. When it detects a mole cricket, it will climb on board. It enters the mole cricket through the mouth or through the sparicles, the breathing apertures along the side of the mole cricket. And once it's inside the mole cricket, it releases from its digestive system a bacterium. So it's the bacterium that really kills the mole cricket, and then the, the nematode fill feeds on the soup that's provided by the breakdown of the mole cricket laden, laden with bacteria. It's um, kind of gruesome, but it really does kill mole crickets, and the the nematode then has two generations inside the mole cricket. Are the nematodes available commercially? The nematodes have been co available commercially, but um, currently they're not. However, through experimental applications and commercial sales, the nematode is now distributed pretty widely in Florida, and it is spread by mole crickets. When the mole crickets are, have just been infected by nematodes and are still healthy enough that they can fly, the mole crickets can fly several miles carrying nematodes with them and spread the nematodes here and there. So biological control had a very important role in the control of mole crickets and pasture lands. I'm with Mr. Paul Dixon, former retired manager of the Beef Research Unit here at the University of Florida. So you've seen a lot of history out here. What was the situation like before Dr. Frank brought the Lara wasp and the Lara plant out here to the Beef Research Unit? Well, when I came here in 1970, I know we had mole crickets. I had a small garden over at my house and the mole crickets were bad. 
but we didn't necessarily see the effect in the pastures uh, until mid 80s. Uh, it started in our pastures and all of a sudden our bahia grass was disappearing and we'd have large areas of nothing but dirt in our pastures and, and mole cricket tunnels. Uh, and the condition was very severe for several years there. And cattle subsisted mainly on the native grasses that evidently the, uh, survived the mole crickets. And uh, Dr. Frank in 98, I believe it was, he wanted to put the plants out here. And so he brought the plants out and we put them and they matured and we already had the wasp here. So personally, I feel that the wasp was probably the reason the conditions got better and, uh, and continued to, to where we don't have a mole cricket problem. There's still mole crickets, but there are not a, a, enough of them to uh, cause us any problem with our behavior grasses. Do you think uh, cattlemen throughout the state uh, also have seen an impact and know what's happening with this wasp? I think there's a lot of them. The county agents have done a great job in, 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 in using Dr. Frank through the years when he was starting this research and a lot of them was interested in it. And those that had the bad mole cricket problems, I, I feel most of those know that the wasp has, has helped them. Uh, I feel that the general public needs to understand the good work that Dr. Frank has done with this biological control of mole crickets because there's a high percentage of people don't understand that. And I personally feel that it's, it's had a big effect on controlling, it won't wipe them out, but we're controlling the mole crickets. That's terrific. Well, thanks, Paul. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Yeah. So this, as you can see, is another example of biological control and integrated pest management and another success story for IPM in Florida.